Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I got another unscripted video. Uh, this one sort of pleases the algorithm, but it's something I did want to get out. And that is my initial... Well, not initial initial because it's been a couple days since Blazar ended. <laughs> but yeah, I did want to get sort of my thoughts and feelings about Blazar after it ended. And... You know, I just, I know that with how slow-paced the Ultra Review series is, I know that I won't be getting to Blazar for probably years and years from now, so, as a proper review, so, it, but I still feel like I wanted to talk about it because one, I am a massive Ultraman fan, as you could probably tell, and Blazar especially... I just resonated with the series and the Ultra so much that I felt I really need to get a video out there to sort of just dump all my thoughts and feelings about the series. I will be doing some episode reviews in the form of shorts and maybe just go to have a bit more of extra shorts for Blazar in terms of thoughts on specific characters and all that, but yeah, I do plan on doing at least like shorts for Blazar but this is like a general overview I I'm not sure if I'll be getting into spoilers for this video if I do I'll try to remember to say hey spoilers but no this is a general overview I don't plan on going into much detail about the series itself but yeah it's just Blazar I was so caught off guard with how how much I was going to fall in love with it. Like I was definitely intrigued with Blazar with the teasers and whatnot. It definitely excited me. Blazar's design is has obviously encapsulated me. If you follow my social media, is like I just drawn Blazar quite a few times, and in fact, what you were seeing is me doing a speed drawing of the Blazer illustration that I posted on, you know, Twitter for the celebration of the final Blazer Friday, which I will dearly miss. But yeah, what I was trying to say is that the teasers, while they encapsulated me, yeah, I was just not expecting to be so blown away, so captured, so enthralled with Blazer as I was and it's to the point where I'm I feel confident when I say that Blazar is in my top five favorite ultra series. Now I am cheating by putting the Tiga Dinagaya as one slot, but I that's that's my cheat, but so far it's TDG no in particular order, it's top five ultra series are TDG, Mebius, Blazar, Seven, and Ultraman, the original. Not in that order, the order tends to... Oh, that was my mouse, because I'm sitting differently, because my cat, um, for how cute she is, she's laying on my chair, so I am I had my mouse on my lap. Uh, so, yeah, that's what dropped. Yeah, so anyway, what I was saying is, like, it's in no particular order, my top five. It's more of just, hey, you know... I pick, I can't just stick with like, oh, this is my top five. I switch around with the series depending on how I'm feeling sometimes. Maybe it's my favorite sometimes. 66 is my favorite. And I would also put like maybe Return of Ultra Man as like a number six. <laughs> but anyway, this is a Blazar video. I'm going off topic. As you can probably tell, this is very unscripted. I don't even have notes up. But I think that might help because I just want to get pure raw feelings about it. And I think one of the reasons why I resonated with Blazar so much is because I'm autistic, which I mentioned in previous videos. But Blazar, like as an ultra himself, I was so caught off, off you know, caught off guard with how energetic, how, you know, like just wild and crazy he was. You know, it's like, we call him the caveman, the feral ultraman, you know. And yeah, you know, it's stick that, but he is a mostly non-verbal 
Ultra, wow. Obviously, I'm not nonverbal. There are, I do sometimes have nonverbal tendencies, or there are moments where I can't remember certain words, at, you know, or I can't speak certain words at a time, you know, or I, I have trouble communicating. You know, that is something I struggle with. So when I see, when I was watching Blazar struggle to communicate with Gento and the rest of the team and to everybody else, non-verbally, it really resonated me. It's sort of what resonate, resonated me with the first half of Amazon, just seeing that struggle to communicate. It's a struggle that I deeply and personally feel because I've, I've been there. I've had to go through speech therapy when I was a kid. I know what it's like to struggle with communication, struggle with, you know, trying to convey thoughts, feelings, and emotions to, you know, trying to, you know, struggle those with maybe like when words escape you or with individuals and people that aren't, you know, going to have the patience to understand you. So seeing that really resonated with me and just all that. And what was really great about Blazar himself is that he's like one of the most defined ultras in terms of personality. Like most ultras, you would, you know, they do, some of them have differentiating personalities, but they all tend to be sort of in this similar ball camp of, you know, very like, either you know stoic or just friendly compassionate you know heroic archetypes i think the ones with the more unique personalities are like say zero you know who's more cocky and all that but you know ultra personalities tend to be in a similar ball range not say they're di you know they are the same but i'm more of like they're similar you know there's a lot of like connect a lot of similar traits within the ultras but with blazar he's just very unique with you because he's very outgoing he's very energetic he's far from stoic in fact i would argue to say that he wears his emotions on his sleeve like so one of my favorite moments like in the series is when like blazar gets like uh the dilsonite sword and he's just you could just tell he is so happy about the sword as he jumps up and down. Uh, it's like, oh my goodness, I love this. I, you know, and, and it feels, you know, again, something resonated with, you know, autism is that I, you know, we sometimes, you know, on the autistic spectrum, we feel emotions much more strongly than neurotypicals do. So even if we can't really convey our emotions or express them, we, we still sometimes feel these emotions a lot stronger. And, you know, we see that with Blazar. Just, I, I just want to say, I don't have my notes up or have any links up, so I'm not going to say any names, but I'll definitely have, I might have, you know, links to all the cast and whatnot. But Blazar suit actor is did such a phenomenal job with the suit acting like i think this is one of the best suit acting you know jobs any ultra has you know any actor has put into an ultra because it's like you can just feel that blazar is like so different so unique you know there he has his own personality through body language through body movements alone through nonverbal, and it's just it's conveyed with both the writing and the acting. It's Blazar is one of the most defined ultras I've ever seen. And it's one of those, like, both on writing and the acting side, as well as directing. They all did an amazing job to convey such a strong personality with very few words or no words. You know, all pretty much all non-verbally, and it's like other than the, you know, and all that, you know, all of Blazar's roars and grunts. You know, he's a very, very vocal ultra, just not a, not a verbal ultra. 
but yeah you know it's like and blazer just I don't, just him being so different and being you know this outcast of sorts and the lineage of ultras it resonate resonated with me so much like when i finally got my hands on dsh figure it's ultraman blazar i'm not gonna lie it was actually getting a little emotional holding the figure just in my hand like i i don't think i've ever really resonated with an ultra so much maybe mebius because mebius is very autistic coded um with mirai but in a different sense and one that i definitely resonate with and mebius is like i said in my top five favorites you know so there's a correlation there but no blazar was is just an ultra that i really resonate with and I, I don't want to get into spoilers. I might do a very, a separate spoiler discussion after I finish all the shorts and whatnot. Or just maybe go into certain aspects in the shorts for Blazar. Because I feel like there's so much you can unpack with Blazar that not even one video or one tweet can do. I might just do... After I do, like, I finish writing up the episode, you know, reviews uh, for the shorts, I go into writing a bit more of, like, specific elements of blazar another element i want to touch upon that i also felt resonate with is i just really loved the human cast in blazar now with new gen i feel like a lot of the characters tended to be written as more of caricatures you know they have like a very prominent like character trope or catchphrase or whatnot a trigger especially comes into mind you know with smile smile uh even decker there was like everybody had like one defined ta trade you know and that's not to say they were bad you know poorly written characters or anything like that but i think in new the new generation ultras they tend to like the other new generation ultraman series they tend to focus in on the trade and then expand upon that trade but there is like definitely they feel like characters where in blazar there was a bit more of a grounded and more mature approach to the characters i felt where i wasn't really watching characters but more people like there wasn't there was some over the topness with uh specifically teriyaki uh i probably butchered it um like i said i don't have anything up here so um but um Teraki, he uh he had some over the top moments and I think even uh Yasunobo like I said I apologize for butchering names. You know, there are some but they're not defined by certain traits. They feel fleshed out people. And in one aspect I kinda get why maybe people feel like oh they didn't feel like fleshed out characters because other than say maybe Gento and Emmy, there wasn't a strong sort of character development. But my counter argument to that is they don't. Their character developments are more subtle. They're more like more in the background. They're more like they feel more real. I guess would be the best way to say that because they are because like if you think of reality nobody really changes with like just one set of like circumstances like nobody changes their personality or grows as a person overnight it's gradual and i think we see that with the characters in place are like going back to yasunobu you know he had a tendency to overwork and and we see like later on that he's managing his time better so there's more of a gradual growth than more of an over character development moments that would be more typical in other ultra series i feel and that that i really like uh but gento especially is just what a unique thing to do is to have the host be the captain of the team like that's something that's never been done in ultra before but i feel like when they decided to make gento the captain the lead it was to acknowledge us older ultra fans us who have 
who are now adults, who now have responsibilities and bills and have to deal with jobs and all that. This was an acknowledgement on their end to be say, say, we see you. While I don't have like a family of my own, like in terms of I don't have a wife or a kid, Gento being a 30 year old, it really meant something to me as someone who's 28 right now. I was like, there's something about that. It was just like, it felt, I was, that made me feel more seen as both an autistic. I was seen as an autistic through Blazar, but I was seen as an adult who loves Ultraman in the form of Gento. And so Gento. He goes through some, he's a really cool character, you know, and he goes through some moments, you know, of growth. And while also having some very distinct character flaws that don't get resolved at the end. Which, again, that goes into my more more grounded and more mature writing style of this series. Where, you know, some flaws are just harder to go through. Like, Gento's, like biggest flaw is that he puts him like he wants to protect everybody else but he's not you know he's not really self-conscious about protecting himself about protecting his own life you know so he's a bit more reckless even though he tells other like his teammates his family to be safe don't do anything dangerous don't be reckless gento is the one to be like I got this, or I'll go. You know, that's his catchphrase, you know, but it's a very subtle and grounded catchphrase. It's not over, like, smile, smile, or Jeed's um, catchphrase. Yeah, so there's more of that. And I'm like, man, that's like, it makes you really emphasize with Gento, but it's like, it's just such a defining character flaw where it's like he would rather put himself in the risk. And also there's, he has like some elements of where he has to overcome his more militaristic training. There's some episodes that actually confront Gento's beliefs. And again, this goes into that more grounded and mature rating where not everything is, you know, resolved, but there is gradual growth throughout the entire series where Gento learns to rely on others to allow them to be the heroes and for him to not be on the sidelines per se but to say like hey i will value my life as much as i value my teams and i will allow my teams to i love my you know my loved ones to make the risks as well you know i will trust them as i you know trust myself you know and it's like it's it's just such a beautiful series and i really resonate with the theme of communication not just because again autism you know funny how that happens you know that that's i think is a great theme especially in today's current lands landmark uh with social media and whatnot that's like we're all so quick to jump the gun like we're all so quick to assume the worst to be very combative to be you know up front but the series shows that like hey we just need to understand each other we need to sit down and actually communicate with one another and that's like it, it's a very beautiful theme because in today's current climate because we i think there's a lot of problems with uh, how we communicate nowadays we're just so very combative and defensive that we don't take the time to see the other's pers- uh, perspective or give others the benefit of the doubt. Like, we don't, like, if somebody's in the wrong, we say, oh, they're in the wrong, you know, shame on them, but we don't take the effort to educate them. And that's like, and that's what the beauty of Blazar is. Like, it's not saying, like, hey, you know, there's no easy solutions in place art, but it's more of like a continuous, like, hey, we're gonna, you know, communication is like an active and a, you know, thing. We have to constantly keep reminding ourselves about it. And yeah, it's just, it's, 
such a really great series. If you haven't watched Blazer yet, I highly, highly recommend you do. It's free on YouTube. It's free on Ultraman Connection. It has both an English sub, an English dub. There's honestly, if you're interested in Ultraman, there's no reason to not watch Blazar when it's this accessible. And the dub's great, you know. And I've actually, this is the first time where a series ended where I've seen the series more than once. I was watching it both sub and dub as it was airing, and then I took a bit of a break with the dub uh, after episode 11 because I got, you know, life kind of happened. But I still kept up the sub, and then it was like right before the finale, I rewatched the entirety of Blazar dubbed. So, you know, there's some really, you know, the dub's great, the original language is great. Blazar is great. I highly, highly recommend it if you have any interest in Ultraman. But with that said, I should probably wrap things up. Like I said, I might go into more details in the shorts. But yeah, this uh, this is my general thoughts and feelings. I personally just really resonated with the series. Well, and that's not to say the series is uh, flawless or that it's for everyone. I I can acknowledge that. Blazar is a series that is not for everybody. It is meant for a specific demographic. And I just happen to be in that specific demographic where I feel like this was a series made for me. Uh, because, you know, and I haven't even gone to like how the special effects are great, how, you know, the attack, the fights were fun, or the fact that we got so much new kaiju in this series. And it's been so long since we've got a series with mostly new kaiju. And it's just, oh my God. See, I'm gushing. I'm gushing, but I gotta wrap this up. It's, I'm over like 23 minutes of recording time, so yeah, I gotta wrap this up. Please go watch Blazar. I highly recommend it. And if that's if it's not for you, it's not for you. That's fair. But yeah, I just I just really love Ultraman Blazar. Anyways, if you, I got another unscripted video planned. Uh coming sometime soon and yeah it's pretty much gonna be unscripted videos until and shorts and the streams and whatnot pretty much like the video essays are still gonna be on hiatus till july but yeah no i'm having a bit of fun with these unscripted videos these very low-key videos uh thank you for watching if you watched this far and i guess i didn't talk about spoilers so yay um but yeah anyways thank you all so much for watching if you want to see more tokusatsu or non-tokusatsu videos, go ahead and subscribe. I got, I might be talking about some non-tokusatsu topics starting next month. We'll see. But yeah, I got stuff still planned and still cooking. And, uh, and also subscribe if you want to see some of my past videos. And yeah, um, if you like the video or if you like Blazer, press the like button, you know, and... Leave me a comment telling me what you like about Ultraman Blazar. With that said, thank you for watching. I hope you have a fantastic day. Take care and shoo watch!